Uh, hi, I'm Greg Chu. I'm the CEO and founder of QPQ Limited. We have a, uh, a system to remove all transactional administration, which translates across both business-to-business -business transactions and also financial services transactions. And that is what brings our interest into this group today. Uh, in fact, over the last two days, the Digital Asset Standards Authority, otherwise known as DASA, The reality for me has been that since we first came out with QPQ and started talking to people about it, we, you know, we come from a very different direction from most crypto type operations or fintech operations. We have experienced bankers and lawyers in our team. And so we've come at this right from the start with an understanding of financial regulation and the necessity of working with, not against, regulators. Now that doesn't mean that we're necessarily just jumping straight toward the, the nearest regulator to us. We are, like other people should be doing, looking to engage with those regulators who are looking to engage with the people who are leading the change. Um, that is the case in, in the UK with the FCA. You have the Lithuanian authorities, the Swiss authorities, now the French authorities, Luxembourg. There are a number of jurisdictions that are actively trying to take a lead in how to address these issues in a way that is protecting both the needs of in investors, users, and the new technologies. And one of the things that we have we found hard, and one of the reasons I wanted to be part of what we're doing here, is that within the context of the industry we're in, we're quite a quiet voice because we're dissenting. We're saying, that the standard fintech response to the regulator saying no isn't why and how can we how can we work with you to make this work. It's no, and I'm going to throw my toys out of the pram, and I'm going to throw a big tantrum. And I've said this in another forum that I've been involved in. When fintech companies come along and say we don't know the regulation and we don't care, that's much like you saying I have the right to drive a car at 100 miles an hour down a 30 mile an hour zone without a driving license. It is as dumb a position as that. Now, we, are, we, we find it hard to say what we say because on the one hand, we have an industry that throws tantrums and thinks that this is the way of getting results. And on the other, we have an entrenched position that looks at the whole FinTech industry and instead of seeing the adults in the room like us, what it actually sees are the children throwing tantrums. So bringing together people who may have different points of view, but fundamentally believe that what we need to do is find a way as an industry to embrace a regulatory position, work with regulators. These are the adults in the room, and this is why we really wanted to be part of this. And, and in fact, three of the founders of QPQ attended this because it's, we see this as being so important, and a fourth would have if he hadn't slipped two discs in his back before he got the airplane. This is vital to this industry's thriving, never mind survival. There are a number of marshmallows in this. I mean, the, the, the synonym has been about this uh, spaghetti leaning tower of Pisa type thing, and that when you put the marshmallow on top, the whole thing falls down. Um, there are things that, when we arrived, we thought would be the marshmallow, but this is perhaps because, as I said a second ago, there are a number of companies who've come here who have different solutions. And part of the process was perhaps to understand that our solutions are quite different in some areas and not necessarily in others. Um, so we all had different ideas of what the marshmallow was. Um, and I don't think we have that answered as yet either because we have found one, and that is very often people talk about tokenization and they talk about it providing liquidity. It doesn't provide liquidity. That's unicorn stuff. It provides the opportunity for liquidity. What actually provides liquidity is market utilization, and where there isn't clear and sufficient market utilization, market makers. Um, 
So that is in the context of what we've come up with so far, that is the marshmallow, is finding that liquidity provision. Um, there will be more, and, and, and this is, this is a, an evolving project that has a long way to go, but I think the outcome of it is what we have been crying out for, which is the adults in the, in the FinTech room coming together and saying, this is how we're going to get from A to B to C to D. And doing it in a way that, that is retrofitable with existing legislation, existing regulation, provides a mechanism for us to work with regulators who have the ability, whether that is intentional or otherwise, to work with innovation change. Um, and that isn't always the case. You know, we have to stop getting angry about regulators who can't do that because sometimes they don't even have the legal remit to do so. Um, again, this is about being adults about this. So once we get to a point where we can start to work in lockstep with the regulator and they can see that there's a reasonable discourse to be had, then we can start to talk about how we can make changes to the regulation that take into account all of the different stakeholders that regulators have to be aware of and that we need to be aware of. So, yeah, we, we've come a long way and I, I, I think perhaps the greatest success of this meeting has actually been to bring more of the adults in the room together because individually our voice is small, together our voice can grow and be heard. Um, so, yeah, some victories, some really important victories, Many more to come. The next step is to codify what we have so far and start building around that, bring together the association on a more formal basis. Um, you know, we have the name DASA, uh, which I think is, is, is great because it, it's, it's memorable. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, NASA for FinTech nerds. So, um, yeah, the, the, those are the, 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 the little baby steps that need to be taken. And then the bigger steps are we need to start looking further into the chain of what we're doing and, and identify all those other marshmallows and figure out how we make the whole thing cohesively hang together and work. And then it's about engaging. It's about getting out there and talking to existing market participants Talk to the market makers on the NYSE, the market makers on the London Stock Exchange. Start finding ways of getting them to take an interest in perhaps market making within a private company context where we have tokenized equities. I mean, I'm not saying that they will say yes, but at least if we're having a conversation with them that comes from a point of view of being well informed ourselves, we're having a conversation with equals. Um, whether they see it that way or not right now, the more we engage in a, in, a, in a responsible adult way, the more that that will be received and, and then the opportunities start to open up. Do the same with regulators, do the same within the crypto world, do the same within the fintech world. Let's start reaching out more and more to people and say, hey, we can do this really well. You know, my, my big frustration with what I term the, the, uh, the unicorn land of, of crypto the vast majority of crypto fintech to me are people who believe that unicorns transport leprechauns from the money tree to the wishing well. They live in la la land, they throw tantrums when they don't get what they want, they blame everybody else for everything. Um, the, the, the issue for me is that what we are doing, this, this, this world of, of tokenization, of digital assets, has such tremendous potential and it's being killed by people who are misusing it, abusing it, the snake oil salesmen, the ones who see an opportunity to do a quick buck, all of those things are damaging what could and should be a tremendous liberation of economics and social positioning. You know, this should be a, an engine to allow people who are not that far up the social and economic, socioeconomic food chain to start taking steps up. I mean, we talk about there being opportunity but the reality for many is that there really isn't. That has to change. And this is a way that that can be done. This can provide the tools for that. So this is really important, much more so than, than whether I make money or you make money or anyone else makes money. This is transformational. And at the moment, there are too many people destroying that pathway. And, and I think if we can bring, again, the adults in the room in, 
and have that ability to start arguing things through in a Socratic way that, that respects one another's inputs and pulls the good pieces out and says, okay, well actually, I, I didn't really agree with the second piece, but the first piece is really interesting. If we bring that to this piece, we pull them together, what do we have? We have an answer that solves this issue. This is really positive. This is, this is how uh, great leaps in thinking can be achieved. This is how solidity in, in what we do can be, can be provided as a baseline. Um, and in this way, we can start to set standards because you know, every time I, I've been to a speech or a talk, or I, I've been up there speaking myself, I hear this accusation that, oh, well, the banks aren't playing ball with the fintech companies, or the regulator isn't playing ball with the fintech companies. But 99% of the problem, I think, is that fintechs, cryptos, all these companies, they're like children standing in a glass house with a whole pile of stones, lots of broken glass, and they're blaming somebody outside the, the greenhouse for the fact that the glass house is, is, is smashed up. Um, this can change that. And I, I, I know I, I've reiterated that point a couple of different ways around, but it is so important. Okay, well this is actually an issue we did talk, touch on a little bit, and I, I talked about how we need to make a choice about what kind of regulation we're working with. Um, so where the regulation is very patrician and exclusionary, we probably need to treat that as being an outlier. Where the regulation is more intelligently permissory, and by that I mean take for example the UK regulations. So if you want to access sophisticated investment uh, instruments, you can self-declare to say, well, look, I take full responsibility for what I do next. And, and I think that is an intelligent thing to do. Is it always a good idea? Maybe not, but then the converse is you get to the US position where 0.1% of the population can participate in interesting investment opportunities, everybody else is pushed to the margins, the, the, the lower profit margins, the lower risk margins, but also the lower opportunity margins. That's wrong. And I think if we end up being US-led, we're going down the wrong path. I think if we look at the, the best practice globally, be that Singapore, Hong Kong, Lithuania, Luxembourg, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, Malta, even Gibraltar, Isle of Man, you know, these countries are trying to find ways of making this work in a constructive, intelligent way, and they, they aren't being irresponsible, they're trying to find a way of doing the balances. We need to work with them, and we need to see if that can then produce a market force that changes the outliers and makes them say, well, hold on, that's working really well there. Maybe these very patrician laws that we have need to be looked at. You know, America is meant to be the, the land of opportunity, but in truth, it's only the land of opportunity. And I say this as a libertarian capitalist, not a socialist. It's only the land of opportunity if you already have money to begin with. That isn't opportunity. And this needs to change. You know, we are going into a period of tremendous change. The idea of the future of work is completely different. That which my father had when you, you left school, you, you would find a job and that job might employ you for the rest of your life. That went long before I entered the workforce. By the time my children enter the workforce, the likelihood of there being actual jobs as opposed to bit part work, where you would contract for particular pieces of work, that's likely to be the way it changes. All of these things are changing, and changing dramatically, and much faster than they have in the past. So, it, it really is a, a, a massively important issue that we do try and find regulatory cohesion, we do try and find the higher standards and drive people through market force toward them. We need to, to drop trade barriers. You know, most of the trade blocks out there are not there to create trade. They are there to restrict trade. Um, they're there to say, okay, uh, for example, if you export uh, oranges from Africa, South Africa, West Africa, Egypt, into the European Union, 
You can do so from a, Euro a, a European Union uh, free trade agreement or sort of free trade agreement country without tariffs during certain points of the year. As soon as European uh, producers of oranges start to have their crop come in, the tariffs go through the roof. It's sheer protectionism. And it doesn't really help consumers, it doesn't really help producers. It's, it's generally unhelpful. I, I know we're slightly off topic here, but it, you asked about globalization of standards. Globalization of standards is really important. The globalization of uh, opportunity, which regulation looks at, which removal of trade barriers look at, these things are really, really important. And they are, I believe they are vital to the futures of my children and, and those of our friends and, and, and colleagues. I used to play rugby at quite a high level and uh, people would ask me, you know, they'd talk about sporting role models and this kind of thing and, and I always said that <coughs> sportsmen were really bad role models because generally they were very selfish. The, the top sportsmen got there by being very selfish. And you know, people would ask me who my heroes were growing up. Well, my heroes were my parents and my grandparents. My grandparents started the credit union movement in Ireland, democratised finance for the, 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 the rural Ireland in a way that hadn't been achieved by anyone before that and, and possibly the credit union movement and the cooperative movement in Ireland transformed rural Ireland economically and socially more than any other measure since bar perhaps the advent of the European Union pouring money into Ireland. Uh, and, and that really did transform Ireland as a country from a third world to a first world position in a relatively short period of time. We've seen the same thing with the, the ascendant countries that have come into Europe as well. Um, so what do I want my children to be able to do? I want my children to be able to say that my dad believed in things, that my dad stood for things, my dad spoke out for things, and I think if I can, if I can give the legacy to my children that my parents and my grandparents gave to me, that we can change the world, we can set our minds to things, and if we do it with truth, honesty, and passion, we can achieve incredible things. And this is a piece of that. You know, all of the great movements in history have started with one person saying this isn't good enough. And then one person found some other person who said, yeah, I agree with you, this isn't good enough. And instead of whining about it, said, let's do something about it. Let's get up and, and, and get on with doing something. We're, we're at a startup stage. We are literally just starting to raise our, our first money. We don't have the money to go throwing around loosely so this was an expensive trip from our perspective, especially given the number of us who committed to be here. But we did that because this was an opportunity to come together with people who were like-minded and who could make that voice stronger, louder, and more powerful. And this is going to change things. And I would love for my children to be able to look back long after I'm gone and say, my dad was one of those people who stood up and said, I will be counted. I will lead.